And welcome back to yet another awesome arrangement lesson here on Lick and Riff, in which we're going to learn Tommy Manuel's Over the Rainbow. It's a masterpiece of an arrangement. I'm not going to play it for you, we're just going to start learning it because you have Tommy's spectacular performance right here on YouTube. And without further ado, we're just going to learn it together. So uh, this is a pretty, pretty advanced arrangement. It's pretty advanced, pretty complex, but surprisingly, the intro with all those harp harmonics um, is not one of the more complex parts of this arrangement because harp harmonics or waterfall harmonics um, or cascading harmonics, any way you want to name them. If you've watched some of my lessons right here on Lick and Riff on waterfall, harp, cascading harmonics, you know that this technique looks and sounds a lot more difficult than it really is. And it makes any chord that you play with it sound a lot more resonant. And that's part of why the, um, it's winter, she's shedding like crazy. Uh, so, um, you're gonna see in a second, uh, I just wanna remind you that for Lick and Ref's 11th anniversary, I'm making you this uh, in-depth Tommy Emanuel lesson, and also I prepared for you a full, in-depth, thorough, guitar workshop on my website, lickandref.com. It's completely free. It's a full video series, a full workshop, full length, and it's designed to break you out of confining guitar habits and break you out of guitar misconceptions so you can break free and really harness your own personal guitar creativity and your personal guitar expression and find your own voice on the instrument and just become a lot more musical, a lot more creative and a lot more free to gain a lot more freedom when you play. That's, uh, that's the purpose of the workshop. It's a full workshop completely for free, lickandref.com go enroll open it in a new tab lickandref.com you can enroll and start right now okay completely free instant access so i look forward to see you there now let's start learning tommy emmanuel's over the rainbow now um i divided this into nine different parts okay so part one obviously is the intro the intro with the harmonics the tab might get a little bit confusing because there's no way to simplify this precise an arrangement. This, this arrangement is so precise, you can't really, uh, you can't summarize it. You can't forgo notes, okay? Each note here is important. So the tab might be more confusing and dense than usual. So um, the first part, as I said, is not that complicated. You put seven on the D string and you bar nine on strings one, two, and three. Okay, this is a major seven chord, okay? And this is basically what he's putting on. And then he's taking the bar from nine to eight and turning it into this augmented chord, okay? Okay, we're gonna talk about this hand technique in a second. Okay, but this is what's going on here. And then it's um, um, it's it's a variation on this chord. Okay, he's adding 10 on the first string. So it becomes a 13 chord, okay? Okay, so we're going over the chord. So it's 9997. Nine, nine, 8887 and then he adds 10 on the first string and then it's just a bar on 7 with 9 on the first string okay now this depending on how you look at it this uh let's call it a minor 7 add 9 chord okay and then 
you take the bar down to six, you leave nine on the first string and you put seven on the third string. This, believe it or not, is a dominant chord. It's a, it's a dominant chord. It's basically a seventh chord. Then, instead of nine on the first string, he plays seven. This is now a diminished chord. Right? So it's voice leading. It's voice leading. It's just textbook perfect voice leading. So once again, right? And then you add 10. Then it's 9777. Then it's 97, uh, 9676. Okay, 9676. Then it's 7676. Okay? So if you play it, doesn't make that much musical sense. But when you start arpeggiating it, if you arpeggiate it, then it makes more sense. But it makes perfect sense when you use harmonics. So the technique for, um, for waterfall harmonics I'm not gonna go in depth here, but it's it's pretty intuitive, as you're gonna see. You take whatever note you play and you play a harmonic, which is 12 okay, frets above the notes. Or if your bar is on seven, okay, you're playing the notes. You're playing the notes on 19. Okay, so if we have nine, 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 and seven, we're playing it on 21, okay? Nine becomes 21, okay, fret 21. He starts, okay, with strings one and two, both of them on 21, and then comes the waterfall effect, the harp harmonic technique. Um, what you do is you play a harmonic on a lower string, and then you play the note on the higher string. Two strings apart. That's the secret here. It's always two strings apart. So if you play, um, if you play 19, okay, as a harmonic, okay, on the D string, okay, and you play the open, uh, not the open, but the note on the second string, you get D na 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 na, na. okay. And it's the same thing with the harmonic on 21 on the third string and the first string on nine. So you get, okay, can you hear the harmonic? Okay, that's the effect. Okay, so you get da da da. Okay, because you get high notes all over the place. And that's basically the whole trick. That's the whole trick. Now, when you go to eight, 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 seven, you do exactly the same thing, but instead of picking the harmonic on 21 on the third string, you, pl you pluck it on 20, and that's it. That's the whole technique. Seriously, that's the whole technique. And when you add 10 on the first string, it doesn't matter because you're still doing the same thing. You're doing the same thing. You're not changing anything picking-wise. You're still picking the first string. The note changes, but you're still picking it. Okay, you're not changing her harmonic here. The harmonic doesn't change. It's still, uh, it's still 20 and 19 because it's eight and seven. So it's still 20 and 19. You haven't changed that. Now, when you play 9777, obviously, what you're gonna do here is even easier because both the harmonics are now on 19 on strings three and four. Now, 
Now the cool thing is that now Tommy has the harmonics on seven, which are exactly the same if you play them on 19. It's exactly the same thing. So he just extends the harp harmonic picking to the rest of the strings. Okay? So you play strings three and one, four and two, and then you continue to five and three, six and four. And then you go back, down physically, up musically. So you go five, three, four, two, three, one. You see, I told you this technique is far, far easier than it looks or sounds. And then um, you do the same thing with the next chord. So you have this chord, but the harmonics are basically the same thing. Okay, so this time the harmonic goes from 19 to 18 on the fourth string. Okay, but you continue playing 19 on string six and five. Okay. Okay. And then you hammer on the seven on the first string. Okay. And you do exactly the same thing. Okay. Exactly the same thing. Just the note changes on the first string. That's the only thing that occurs. And then you have a little bit of gameplay here. Um, because he's uh, having fun with, okay, with pulling off the seven to six on the first string and hammering it back on every time he plays the first string, okay? So this is pretty much freestyle. You can do it in any order you choose. Okay? Just create your own interpretation of this beautiful line. Um, he also adds the harmonica on 19 on the fifth string, somewhere in between, and then he plays the harmonic uh, on seven, on string six and five, and then the harmonics on 12 on strings two and one. That's the intro. The last chord of the intro is this. Okay, it's a um, a whole note scale. Okay, it's one, three, five on strings two uh, on strings two and three. And an E7 chord. Nine seven nine on strings two, three, and four. Okay. Okay? So you can do do the one three five with your little finger and then you're right on the spot you can add a harmonic on 12 if you want uh, sometimes he does that on live shows okay Tommy Emmanuel always always changes his uh, his performances because he as he told me during the interview he always seeks to keep it interesting for him. He never, um, he, he never uh, gets bored with his own arrangements that way. If you haven't watched our interview, do it. It's, it's a beautiful, beautiful interview. Hey, now you have this. A. Just an A chord. And then you have this. It's D over A. So I don't have to explain that, right? Arpeggio strings five to two. You can slide into the D. Okay? It's four, two, three on strings four, three, two. Okay? It's a part of the C shaped bar. So. Okay? Um, what he does here. the open E string to the D chord. This creates D add nine. Okay? 
This creates D at nine. Okay. So, and then you have D minor over A. Which is three two three instead of four two three. Okay, he just arpeggiates it from the bass up to the high note, the E note, and then strings two and three. And then you have this. Okay, now he takes the D chord four two three down one fret. Okay, just as a motif for what's coming. Okay, slide to a bar on seven on the same strings, two, three, and four, and he slides it down to six. So it's a slide to seven and then slide to six. So, okay. And then you have 12 on the first string. Okay, you have 12 on the first string. You can play the E bass. Okay, and then six, seven on strings two, three, and four. Back to E, okay. Okay, this is now E9, okay? Okay, this is E9. So, okay, D to D flat, okay? And this, okay, you can't name this chord yet because there's no E bass yet. So technically it's now B minor seven to B flat minor seven, but it's not the harmony. Okay, and then 12, six, seven, and then 12 again. You can play the bass in between. Now, um, if I had used the parlor guitar uh, for this, uh, this would be much easier, but uh, Tommy has a parlor guitar as well. Uh, but you can pull it off, you can do it. I, I don't have large hands, and if I can do this stretch, you can obviously do it as well. So that's part two, okay? That's part two. The intro after the intro. You can call part one the exposition and then you have the intro. Now starts the arrangement. Part three, hammer on to four on the bass and then the A strang. Okay, so you bar for A, okay, and you have five on the first strang, a high A note. Okay, so you arpeggiate, you can just play the third string, so you have A, A, and A. And then you have a bar on two, or your thumb on the bass, because this is now F sharp minor, or F sharp minor seven. And then you have C sharp minor seven, okay? It's a bar on four, A minor shape, without the little finger, and you play, Okay, strings one, two, three, and five. You hammer on five to seven on the second string. And then the four on the first string. And then you have A7, okay, which is this. It's five, five, six, and five. Okay, and you can strum it, you can pick it, okay? You can pick it without the bass, okay, to emphasize the seven, so. Then you have D, okay? A C-shaped bar on two, just, just the D chord. And then you hammer on two on the first string with your little finger, okay? Because you put on this, okay? Remember that diminished chord that we played before? Okay, it's the same idea. It's two, one, two, one on strings one, two, four. So, Okay, you hammer on, and then you arpeggiate the rest of the chord, strings four, three, two. And then, okay, a Tommy Emmanuelism, three, two, zero, slide, pull off. Okay, so, okay, you can even slide from three to, uh, from two to three. Okay, and then you have E. Okay, you have E, and um, it's, zero, two, three on the second string. Now, you do it with the second finger. Okay, because you have this. You have E minor seven afterwards. So it's, you 
let go of the cord. Okay, you have to let go of the E chord. The open strings keep ringing. So it's not that noticeable when you let go of the chord. So, okay, zero, two, two slide to three on the second string and you put on two and four on strings five and four. And you arpeggiate the chord. And then you arpeggiate this chord. Okay, this is A7, add 11. You can also just call it A11. So, okay, it's three on the second string, six on the third, five on the fourth, okay? okay? Keep this chord in your arsenal when you, when you want this chord instead of a seventh chord, um, instead of a dominant chord, this is a dominant chord. Okay, but it's a mellow dominant chord. You have to put the bass um, where the finger on the D string is. So just, this is the full shape, but because this is A, you can use the open A string. Now, on the YouTube version, okay, Tommy uh, palm mutes this chord. Okay, you don't have to. It's a beautiful chord. And then you have D over F sharp. Okay, it's D with F sharp on the bass. You play strings two, three, four, and six. And then you have F six. Or it's true harmony here. This is D minor over F. Okay. Okay, but if you think about it as F six, it's sometimes psychologically easier to put the chord on. It's, uh, it's F with three on the second string. So it's three, two, three on strings two, three, and four with F on the bass, with one on the bass. Okay, so it's, okay? This is D minor. This is a variation, an inversion of D minor. And then you have A with two on the second string. And then, Two on the third, open second string. And then you have F sharp seven, okay? And you play strings two, three, four, and six. Then your little finger on three on the second string, giving you time to put on C9. Okay, so you have, have this, okay? It's three, three, two, three on strings two to five. Okay, so it's, Okay, this is, by the way, this is what's called a tritone substitution. It's a, it's a jazzy form of a blues turnaround. Let's not get into why this works theoretically. Just know that you can do anything that sounds good to you. If it sounds good to you, it's going to sound good to everyone else. I'm pretty sure that's what Tommy did here. And then the open second string. So you have, okay, so you can leave the chord on and just open the second string. And then, okay, it's B7. So you leave the chord on, but you take it down one fret. Okay, it's the same fingering. Okay, two, one, two on strings, five, four, three. So now it makes sense, right? And then you have, okay, you have one on strings three and six, okay, on both of them, two on the third string, and you have E minor, open strings, two, three, and six, and then another Tommy Emanuelism, two, three, two, okay, it's a fast slide, and you have two on the third string for A, and you do this, okay? okay? It's a bar on two, a full bar on two, five on the bass, and a hammer on from two to four on the fifth string, and then you play strings four and three. This is a G shape, okay? This is a G, a G chord. Okay, up here, so. so he can hammer on that major third on the fifth string, on the bass. 
that's brilliant. Just a brilliant, brilliant ending chord choice. It's A, but it's an unexpected A with that, with that C sharp there. So that's part three. Okay, so let's just go over it. You have A, okay, F sharp minor, and then C sharp minor. A7, D. Okay, D uh, flat diminished. E. E uh, minor 7, A. It's A at 11. A7 at 11 or A11. D over F sharp. D minor over F. A. F sharp 7. C9. D7. And then. A with F bass there. And then you have E minor. Now, the F bass there is. Okay? It's a bass move. Okay? Leading you back to A. It's not a direct harmony. It's a bass move. Uh, that's how smart Tommy Emmanuel is. Um, now, there's another thing that I wanted to show you, but let's finish it first. And this beautiful A. Okay? Now, um... So after he's playing the A chord, he has this really interesting, uh, really interesting, again, a whole tone experience. So, okay, it's seven, five, six on strings two, three, and four, seven, five, and six. Okay, this is an augmented chord, um, and he just takes it two frets up every time. So. Okay. Okay. Any way you want to pick it. Works. Okay, and then at the end, he plays 12, 13, 13, and 15. Okay, this is a 13th chord. We played this already in the intro. Okay, so now it's on 15. So it's 15, 13, 13, 12. Okay, so uh, he's playing this chord and then 13 on the first string. And the last note is 12, so he plays the harmonic. So he has time to go back to the beginning and play A again. Okay, so you have this. Okay, augmented. 13th harmonic. And... This beautiful piano-like move. You have A, just the A bass, and you have a solo. Two, four, two, one, two, on the third string. Okay, hammer on, pull off, slide, slide. Two, four, two, one, two. And then five on the first string. So you have the uh, octave. Okay, so. Okay, and when you put five, you put the bar on the whole second fret, you play F sharp minor again, and it's exactly the same um, up to, um, basically up to F6, up to D minor, with slight changes in the middle, okay? So you start. Okay? You let the note ring. Okay, while well, you put the bar on, and when you get to A7, okay, when you get to A7, he plays 7-5 on the first string. Okay, that's the difference. Okay, I told you, he variates. So, okay, okay and you continue from D uh, to D minor. Um, to D diminished, uh, to D flat diminished, and so on and so forth. When you get to the A at 11 chord, this time he doesn't palm mute it. Okay? And then you have 
the D over F sharp, and then you have the D minor over F or F6, and then, okay, there's another change, um, another lick, zero on zero on the first string, hammer on pull off, and then three on the second string, and then A with two on the uh, on the second string. Okay, so it's. Okay. Um, and then you continue all the way down to the last A, and then you have this. You have E augmented, and he plays it in, um, harmonics. He plays it in artificial harmonics. So, first of all, this chord is beautiful for the ending as well. Okay. This is an F shape on the second string, okay, on five. So you have five, five, six, seven. So you can play it in harmonics, okay, 12 frets above it. Okay, he plays uh, the harmonic on 19 on the bass. Okay, so you have 19, 19, 18, 17, 17, okay? And then you have the chorus, part five. Okay, the open E string, and then you have two and four on strings two and three. And then you have the E string, and then two and two. And then the E string, and then two and one. And then the E string, and then two on the second string, and four on the fourth. So what you get basically is the same thing with this on the low notes. It's just the scale, it's going down the scale. And then you have this. So you have zero and three, okay? The open E string and three on the second string with 3-4 on the 4th, 0 and 1 on the 3rd. This is also brilliant. This is a chromaticism, a beautiful, beautiful chromaticism. So, 3 and 3, okay, strings 2 and 4. 3 and 4, strings 2 and 4. And then you have 3 and 0 on 2 and 3. And then three and one, right? And then the open E string and A6. It's two, two, two on strings one, two, and three with the open A string. And then you have another beautiful voice leading. It's two, two, and zero this time with one on the A string. And then you have B minor seven. Just B minor seven. And then a slide to seven on strings two, three, and four with E. We did it at the beginning. Okay, remember? This is E9. And then you have E augmented again. This time, it's just one and one on strings two and three with the open bass, okay, with the open E bass. And then you just play the open E string. So um, that's the first round. A6, B flat, half diminished. Actually, it is diminished. But it's, but it's A7, it's A7 with a B-flat bass, so it's a B-flat diminished 7. So let's not get into theory too much. Theory is there to explain the music. The music is all that's important. E9 sus4, and E augmented. Then you play the first bar again. 
you go to page two on the tab, if you have the tab book, you can download the tab book. The link is below in the description and the full lick and riff tab book. Um, then after you do this, you do this. Hey, okay, surprise, it's just one chord. It's the open E string. And then you have G sharp seven. It's just G sharp seven. And you play strings two, three, four, and six. And you have four, seven, four, seven, four, seven, four, seven on the first, uh, on the, on the second string. Okay, so it's. Seven is the last note. And then you have C sharp minor seven. And then you have this. Okay, this is. Um, Okay. Um, again, it's another um, voice leading technique that involves chromaticism. So he leaves the four on the first string, but he plays C7. So you put C7 on, okay, three, five, three, five, three, with four on the first string. Okay, so you play the first string and then you arpeggiate the chord. So you have. So you get this weird chord. It's another form of an augmented chord, but um, hey, there's no better way to explain it. This is what's happening here. Okay, then you have a bar on seven. So you play the, the first string on seven, then seven on the bass, and then the chord, strings two, three, and four. This is B minor seven. And then you have this. Um, it's two, three, two on the first string, Tommy Emmanuelism, double slide. And then you have, okay, you have the bass. You play one and one on strings two and three, and you pull off on the first string. Okay, you pull off to zero. So it's, okay, that's what happens here. So it's, Okay, you pull off, you don't play the zero. You can play the open E string, but if you want to be as lavish as Mr. Emmanuel, that's what he does. And then you have the verse once again. You have the verse once again, uh, starting with A, okay. okay? And you play it up to, okay, up to D flat diminished. Now, when you play the D-flat diminished, this time he plays a whole arpeggio of it. He plays strings two to four and then takes the little finger, plays three on the fifth string and then arpeggiates back up. So it's... Okay. Okay, it's the little finger. It's going to three on the fifth string. Um... You're not supposed to hear the open E string. I just wanted to see how it sounds. Okay, it's not that bad. So it's if, if you happen to pull off and play the open E string, don't worry about it. It still sounds diminished. And then you have five, four, zero on the first string, and then you have A major seven. Okay, and then the E minor seven chord. So it's A major seven, A with one on the third string and you play the bass and then you play the chord with zero two on the second string. And that E minor seven chord, okay? Which looks like B minor seven with the open third string. Okay, so it's... And then you play from... The, um, the A11 chord to the end. And you play a normal A chord. You don't play that G shape. Okay, you play a normal A chord. Now part seven begins uh, by playing A. Okay, he's playing rhythm, just the A bass, the A chord, then the E bass, then the A chord. Playing twice. Then you have this, okay? Um, 
Okay, uh, nope, it's not D, it's A. Okay, so it's. Now, it's the same, it's exactly the same melody as before. Okay, um, but this time you play it with A. So you play A. Yeah, you play A, then you play A major 7, so it's 1 on the 3rd string. Then it's 2, 2, and 4. Okay, 4 on the D string. Okay. You have this. And then you have A again. And then you have the D chord. Okay, 3, 2, 4, remember, from the beginning. And then you have 3, 3, 5. Okay, three, three, five. So, and then you have three, four, six. Okay, it's this. This is a seventh chord, by the way. This is just a seventh chord. And then you have three, five, six. Okay, so it's three, four, six, three, five, six. Okay, so it's, you have that chromaticism in there. So, open E string, and then you have this, A6. It's 7, 6, 7 on strings 2, 3, and 4 with A. And then you have this. It's seven six five with six on the bass. Okay? It goes from A to B flat. It's a chromaticism in the bass. So it's and then and then it's more chromaticism from B flat to B. Okay, so you just bar seven again for B minor seven, strings two, three, four, and six. And then you have this. Okay. It's E augmented again. It's two on the fifth, one and one on strings two and three. So you prepare that. Okay. You just arpeggiate it. Okay. And Tommy Emanuelism 232, two, double slide, pull off to zero on the first crank. And then you have that A bar again. And then you have G sharp seven again. Um, then you have a Spanish style scale. So you have four, five, four on the first string, hammer on, pull off, seven, five, four on the second, six, five on the third. There's the Spanish sound. And then you have seven, six on the, uh, 6-5 on the 3rd, sorry, I said on the 4th, right? 6-5 on the 3rd, 7-6 on the 4th, 7-6 on the 5th, and then 4-3 on the 5th. Okay, so you have... Okay, so it's... Okay? And then you put on this. You put on um, this chord. Okay, it's a it's an F shape. So it's it's G sharp again, but with C on the bass. So it's okay. This is G sharp, just with the third on the bass. So it's so you have four, five, six on strings two, three, and four, and it's an arpeggio. Okay, so you play the Spanish scale. Page eight. Then you play G sharp minor seven. Okay, just G sharp minor seven. Okay, you can just bar, or you can add uh, five on the. Um, oh, I mean G. Sorry, it's G sharp. Okay, you can add six on the fifth string. So it's um Okay, um 
Then you have the C7 chord with four on the, on the first rank. And then you have seven on the first string bar again and you play harp harmonics now this is where tommy has a little bit of fun okay you you can you know just go up and down the 19th uh fret harmonic and he hammers on nine and pulls it off on the first string and the second string so if you hammer on on the first string if you pull it off You can also okay. You can also change harmonics while you do that. Also on the second string. Okay. You can create all sorts of different variations on it. This is the sound that you want to get. And then uh, you add um, 10 on the first string and you just go up and down. Okay? Um, you add, sorry, uh, you add 10 on the fifth string, sorry. You add 10 on the fifth string. So your harmonic now is on 22, okay? so. So have fun with that, and then you bar on uh, you, you bar seven again, but this time instead of ten, you have nine on the second string and go up and down. Okay, that Indian sound, and then the hammer on pull off thing again with nine on strings one and two, and at the very end it's natural harmonics again. Okay. It's the open E bass, then seven, okay? Harmonics on seven, all the way to the second string, and then on the first string you play 12. Okay? And then we get the E augmented chord again. Okay, so. So it's one, one on strings two and three with a pull off from two to zero on the first string. And then it's A with five. F sharp minor with five. C sharp minor. Five seven on the second string. And then you have this E minor seven. It's the same chord on seven with eight and ten. Okay, so it's. And then. It's seven 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 on strings one and two and three. I'm losing focus here with the open A string. This is A6. 10 on the second string. So, okay, this is another jazz reharmonization move. And then you have D major 7, which is 2 2 2 with 5 on the fifth string. Okay, so it's. And then you have this. Uh, sorry. This is um, this is G nine. Believe it or not, this is G nine. It's one zero two with the G bass. Okay. Now you can do D major seven with the open D string, by the way. Okay. So Tommy Manuel puts five on the fifth string, but you can do it with the open uh, D string if you want. So. Another chromatic move from two to one on the first string. Uh, sorry. Um, then three one zero double pull off on the first string. Three on the second open first, and then you have E and E minor seven to the end of the verse, 
exactly the same as on the first uh, on the first verse. So that's what you play when you reach this verse. Okay, so it's A, F sharp, minor. so on and so forth um, then last part part nine you play the first two bars of part five you play the first two bars of part five part five was this um, part five right and then you have B minor seven then you have this. Which is E diminished. It's okay, the, the shape you're going for is 4343. Four, three, okay, on springs one to four. You start with the E bass and you arpeggiate up and you hammer on and pull off the four on the first ring. And then you just go b back and forth over the chord. Okay, until you want to finish. So you go to five on the first string and you play A. Okay. And then you have... Okay, a bar on five, except for the open fifth string. This is now A minor seven. Okay, so it's. And now we go back to the motif, the voice leading from the beginning. Okay, so it's five, 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 five. Five four four four. Five three three three. And then it's this chord. It's five five four 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 and five on the bass. So okay, so it's okay. It's another form of. Um, of a turnaround. Okay, so it's... And then that final chord. Okay, it's five, five, four, 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 five. And, of course... Okay. Um, he does the har harmonics over that one. 12 frets above, remember. Um, and strums it lightly, just to uh, finish on a lighter note. That's Tommy Emmanuel's Over the Rainbow, a full and thorough in-depth examination and lesson for this masterpiece of an arrangement. Download the tab, the link is uh, right here in the description. The tab is for free. Remember the workshop, the free workshop, a full thorough, in-depth, creative workshop to break you free of confining guitar misconceptions and habits and allow you to bring your full self into your playing creatively, musically, and expressively. Thank you so much for watching. This is, uh, as I said, this is your uh, gift for 11 years of Lick and Riff. Thank you for being my Lick and Riffers. Thank you so, so much. Um, see you in the next lesson. Bye for now. Have fun.